I always had this idea that justices Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito, sometimes probably joined by Mike Pence, sat in a dark cellar surrounded by medieval torture devices, uh, watching The Handmaid's Tale um, and enjoying it. Well, um, unfortunately, <laughs> what they've really been doing is just waiting for uh, an unethical, dishonorable hack, a, an alcoholic abuser of women, and a misogynistic religious fanatic to join them on uh, the Supreme Court so they could pull off one of the greatest crimes against Americans um, pretty much ever. For the first time in our history, a right that has been granted has been taken away. Don't get me wrong, that is not the only bad stuff coming out of the Supreme Court, but think about that for a second. I am now, as are my daughter and all of the other women and girls in this country, no matter where you live, a second-class citizen. Now, depending on where you live, which is one of the things that makes this all so, so much worse, um, you may be a second-class citizen just theoretically until, of course, you go to a state uh, in which these increasingly extreme um, anti-abortion laws are being implemented. Even so, I don't like the idea that I had to ask my husband's permission in order to record this today. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I didn't, and uh, at least I won't for the time being. Although, I'm sure if Alito and Thomas and Coney Barrett and Gorsuch and what's his name? Oh, Roberts, he must be so proud that this is his court. Uh, if they have their way, then... Um, they're going to turn back the clock to a time when women, women weren't allowed to have credit cards unless their husbands co-signed. By the way, that, that didn't happen until uh, 1973 that women could have their own credit cards. So a lot of this stuff we take, we take for granted, but it hasn't been that long. And that's one of the things that is so uh, concerning about this. Uh, you know, on the one hand, it was a long time coming. They've been working on this for 50 years. On the other hand, we're all acting surprised and shocked, even though we know that this has been the agenda. They haven't been hiding it. Although I will say that uh, elected Republicans, for the most part, are being pretty fucking quiet. Um, so I think we need to, we've had a few days to regroup. We need to stop being shocked, we need to stop being in mourning, and we need to be enraged, because on shows like Meet the Press, sorry to bring up anything having to do with Chuck Todd, but he actually did ask a good question for once. Uh, Governor Asa Hutchinson was on, and Chuck Todd asked, so you would make a 12-year-old rape victim carry the baby to term and the governor said sure <laughs> so we need to keep asking those questions hopefully people better than chuck todd will be doing it um we need to ask every single elected republican this question and you know people have suggested that that there is not there are things that the democrats can be doing they don't have the votes fine they don't have uh they they still have the filibuster okay well we can't do anything about that but you know what we can do we can make these fucking republicans go on record every single day and vote against protecting little girls who have been raped by their fathers <laughs> from having to carry a baby who is both her daughter and her sister to term make them go on record saying that they absolutely approve of sentencing women with ectopic pregnancies or um, whose embryos are not viable 
uh, but must be aborted, and women who have miscarried but whose whose uh, fetuses need to be aborted, they're perfectly comfortable sentencing those women to death. That is now the the penalty for an ectopic pregnancy or non-viable pregnancy that must be aborted in this country. It's a death sentence, and at the end of that death sentence, there is no life because there is no baby. We need to hammer on this every single day. We need to make sure that for once, Gen Z feels protected and feels like we're fighting for them. If our leaders aren't going to do it, then it needs to be us. I mean, for God's sake, we're destroying their planet. Um, we cannot keep them safe from guns because of this radical, rabid minority that seems still to have all of the power. But at the very least, we can turn this thing around by coming out to vote in numbers like we've never seen, showing them that we have their backs by protesting and not moving on an inch from this, and yes, encouraging them to vote as well by giving them a reason. We can't just say, you know, vote. We have to give them a reason to vote because we so often don't. So um, dark times, uh, many more dark times ahead. Uh, but, you know, for obvious reasons, uh, because it's so earth shattering and because the uh, the leaked draft came out a month, I guess it was a month ago, um, we we kind of knew this was coming. And again, for the first time in history, a fundamental right has been taken away from half of the population of the United States. Mitch McConnell, the greatest traitor to this country since Robert E. Lee, has finally gotten his way. America is now a theocratic apartheid state. Seriously, fuck all of you. A couple of uh, SCOTUS rulings sort of went under the radar for obvious reasons. Um, you know, <laughs> some really big decisions were handed down that, that kind of uh, sucked up all the oxygen. But it is important to know the extent to which this illegitimate, craven, deeply, deeply cruel anti-American uh, majority on now the most illegitimate Supreme Court, I think, in American history. It's important to keep an eye on what they're doing beyond... Um, Row and beyond guns, um, which I'll get to in a second. But they uh, basically made it optional, I guess, for police officers to read people their Miranda rights or give them Miranda warning, which tells them what their rights are, which is a very bad thing. Most people who get arrested don't know what their rights are. They don't know that they have a right not to incriminate themselves. And... Cops really aren't inclined to have them shut up, which is probably why they will not take the option of reading the Miranda rights. So that's bad. Um, and then there was another case, I'm not that familiar with the details, but essentially a guy's on death row. He is going to be executed. This wasn't about clemency. This wasn't about overturning anything. He simply wanted to choose his method of dying or of being murdered by the state, shall we say. Um, because I believe he was going to get the, uh, the electric chair. And if you know anything about that, it's one of the most barbaric ways imaginable to kill another human being. So he wanted something else. I don't know if it was a firing squad or lethal injection. Either way, he's going to be dead and uh, luckily, the majority prevailed, but the minority, and I bet you know who that was, they basically said, too fucking bad, you need to die as horribly as possible. That's who these people are. And then we come to guns. Um, <laughs> I, I'm from New York. I live in New York. I hate guns. And the idea that they are taking away my state's right 
to decide what it needs in order to keep its citizens safe. Well, it's horrible on its face. Because I don't know if you've been to New York City. It's very densely populated. I don't want a bunch of people I don't know packing heat on the subway at rush hour in 90 degree heat. I don't. Nobody should. Um, although, of course, I, I heard from somebody who knows that the number of uh, permits that have the uh, applications for permits has skyrocketed in New York. Because you don't, you don't need a reason anymore to conceal carry a weapon. Why do you want to conceal carry a weapon? Eh, just because. Because I can. Because the Supreme Court said so. But the reason this is even more galling is because this Supreme Court majority used exactly the opposite reasoning <laughs> as it did when it overturned Roe and Casey. In that case... It has to be up to the states. In the case of guns, nope. States can't decide. I mean, seriously, guys, make up your fucking mind. Which is it? The thing is, though, they don't need to tell us. These are morally bankrupt people who are drunk on their own supply. They realize that there are no limits to the damage they can do because nobody can stop them, at least not right now. So we need to get really quickly, the only way to stop them is to put people in power who will render them entirely ineffectual. We need at least four more justices on the Supreme Court. There are 13 districts in the United States, there should be 13 justices at least just neutralize these fucking cruel misogynistic just i you know what i i'm running out of words uh to to uh describe just how awful they are um but probably the most heartbreakingly ironic way to describe them is it would be uh uh, anti-american because everything they're doing goes totally against the fundamental, the foundational ideas uh, that this country is supposed to believe in. Equality, equal justice, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. We're now in a position where most of us are not free to pursue those things anymore, either because our children are increasingly at risk of getting gunned down in schools, in churches, and now who knows, in subways in New York City, and because half of us aren't even full citizens. So we need people in power who will get rid of the fucking filibuster, which by the way, think about this. If there were no filibuster, none of this would be happening. If they lifted the filibuster tomorrow, all of this could go away. If that doesn't make you angry, I really don't know what else will. We need to stay on these issues. Yes, the decision about uh, the about Roe, And Casey was absolutely horrific, but so is everything else this court is doing. They are chipping away at every single right we have, every single thing about this country that has made it a place worth living. I I don't believe it it is anymore a place worth living. And um, that's, that blows my mind. In this shockingly, breathtakingly brief period of time, six people, three of them, four of them actually, perjurers, three of them nominated by a corrupt, illegitimate person in the White House. They basically took away many, many, many of the reasons that this country is a place that's been worth living in. I cannot think of any better reason to, if we can't get rid of them, at least make them powerless. These are dangerous people. These are dangerous times. I don't know about you guys, but I'm like so tired of hating people, I don't know. But the idea that these just despicable, illegitimate people who should never have been on the Supreme Court in the first place 
are destroying any of the good things about this country makes my fucking head explode. Two other cases uh, were decided um, by the illegitimate and, as we now can confirm, completely fanatical Supreme Court having to do with uh, religion. I'll give you one guess which religion we're talking about. Um, yeah, the fir in the first case, uh, a, a main law which prohibited state funds going to uh, tuition for parochial schools for parents who live too far away from public schools and needed to send them to private schools was overturned. So essentially now government funds can go to pay for the tuition of religious schools. Okay, <laughs> this is um, essentially destroying a fairly important part of the First Amendment, the Establishment Clause. I, I'm guessing that a, a, the largest portion of that money would be going to Christian schools. And even if it weren't, it shouldn't be going to any religious schools. But that, although not, not insignificant, of course, but it was somehow less shocking than the body blow of a decision regarding whether or not a football coach could hold prayers on the 50-yard line of the public school's football field. I mean... What are the chances, you think, that if the coach had been Muslim, the court would have decided differently? And this is the problem. Well, the real problem is this is now a Christian nationalist na country. And I did not sign up to live in a theocracy. Uh, you know, um, and also, I forgot to mention this earlier, uh, that's the other thing about the decision in Roe. Um, Muslims, Jews, abortions are, are within a, a particular time frame, perfectly okay according to their religious dogmas. So in this other way, this court is saying Christianity is the religion of the land and our laws are based on that religion, not on the Constitution, but on whatever we make up about what we think Christ said. Of course, Jesus didn't talk about any of this shit. They're literally making it up as they go along so they can get the theocratic apartheid state that they've wanted for decades. They are now opening the door for public schools, public schools, Schools that our, ta our tax dollars fund for these schools in which all children should feel safe. Well, they can't because of guns. All children should feel accepted. Oh, wait, they can't because if you're Jewish or Muslim or not of any religion at all, you now are going to be forced to be in a situation in which Everybody around you is praying to their Christian God. It is so fucking despicable. I don't quite know how this got. I, I'm sure I could unravel it. I don't want to. I just want to be angry. And I want somebody in power to be as angry as the rest of us are because then maybe they'll understand the threat. Maybe they'll understand the danger. Maybe they'll understand that by playing by rules that no longer exist, the America they think they're representing will no longer exist. We need to make that clear every day. There should be no established religion in this country. This is not a Christian nation. The idea of prayers in schools is absolutely antithetical to what's in the Constitution and the fact that there are six rogue agents making decisions that are beyond 
anybody else's ability to control should terrify all of us. Senator Ron Johnson, Republican from Russia, might be in a bit of trouble. Uh, he's spinning wildly, but let's face it, what would we expect from an American senator who a couple of years ago spent July 4th in Moscow with Vladimir Putin? I mean, it seems to be that he... Oh, hang on a sec. Hello? Oh. I will be right back because um, apparently I parked my car illegally and I have to uh, go blame one of my aides. See ya. <laughs> Thank you.